This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. If you've got oddly shaped patio furniture that needs to be covered, you may want to consider building your own covers since covers are often hard to find when shapes are irregular. Patio furniture and the upholstery on it can often deteriorate quickly if not protected appropriately. So we're going to show you in this video how to build protective covers. Let's start by patterning the top. Uh, we're going to make outdoor covers for this, cur this curved uh, sectional unit. So we're, this actually has three pieces to it. We're going to start with one. And the first piece I'm going to um, make is the piece that goes from here all the way down to here. So I'm going to measure across the back and give myself an extra inch on each side. The extra inch on each side is for seam allowance. And that measurement is 54. And then I'm going to measure an inch extra back here and down to here, which would be 34. So I need a piece that's 54 by 34 to start. We're going to measure that out on our Sherlast fabric with marking chalk and obviously a straight edge. Then we'll cut it out with scissors. I'm going to put this piece on with the wrong side out so I can make my marks on the wrong side on this piece. Sure, last fabric does have a right side and a wrong side. And then clamp it with these clamps on the frame of the chair to hold it in place while I work with it. When clamping, ensure the one inch extra on each side is about equal. We've chosen to use a Sherlast fabric from Sayerite. This is a 100% polyester solution dyed material. It's good for outdoor applications. It's a very breathable fabric and yet it is water resistant. Excellent for covers like this. And I want the, the rain water, snow, whatever, to come off of this. So I'm going to try to make this as sloped as I can, which is going to require a couple of um, darts here. These darts will take up excess fabric, so the fit will be slightly tighter, depending on how many darts are added. So I'm just folding out the fullness in this front piece with two darts that are approximately even from one side to the other. And I've put pins in the front corners to hold it in place while I work with it. And there's about an inch here from the piping on the cushion to the edge of the fabric. The extra inch will be used to join a front piece. And I want to maintain this curve in my cover. So I'm going to take my chalk and mark where the cording is on the cushion. And it's going to taper out to the end over here. And this doesn't have to be a perfect mark, just so you can cut. When we cut this, we'll cut out an inch from the mark so we still have that seam allowance there. And I'm also going to make a mark up here of where I want this dart to end. Covers for furniture should be snug, but not so snug that they're difficult to install quickly. And then I'm also going to come back here and curve the back See how much extra there is right there beyond the frame? I'm going to make a mark on the frame and curve that also so that the back piece, when I attach it, it also curves. Sayerite also stocks other great brands of outdoor storage cover fabrics. Be sure to check them out at sayerite.com. I typically like to choose a fabric that is water resistant, breathable, and also abrasion resistant. And that is true of Sherlast fabric. This edge will stay like it is right for right now. So I'm going to take this off and stitch in my two darts and trim it along my lines with, that I've made with the chalk. I want to have about a one inch seam allowance on this, so I'm going to measure one inch out from my initial mark and trim that extra off. And just curve it up to the straight edge. And the same thing on the other side. If cut with scissors, unraveling may occur, but Sherlast fabric is fairly resistant to unraveling when cut with shears. If you want to ensure that this does not happen at all, we suggest using the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife to cut the fabric. And then on this side, at the front, I'm going to stitch my darts in and then I'm going to trim this edge off. 
To sew the darts, start on the edge where it was pinned together, do some reversing to lock your stitch in place, and then sew up to the point where you want to stop the dart. This is where Cindy's finger is now. Then do some reversing at that point as well, and that dart is complete. Now she'll do it to the second dart for this panel. You'll notice occasionally that Cindy holds the trailing threads, as she did here. That is always a good idea to help to prevent the sewing machine from carrying those loose threads and getting them bound up to create a rat's nest on the bottom side of the fabric. If it's not done, not a big deal, but typically rat's nests on the bottom sides don't look as good. So try to hold the tails when you start sewing. Okay, I made a... Um the, the curve of the front of the seat of the, on the cushion is these blue marks and I measured out one inch like I did at the back and just trimmed that off. It wasn't very much but it makes the curve of the front of the chair. We'll only be showing patterning and sewing together of one of the three required panels for our patio set. If you have a set like this you may want to pattern the other two or more for yours as you do the first one. So use the first one as a pattern for the others. It's your choice. I'm ready to add this front piece on um, to my panel that goes across the top. So I need the height of that cushion and it's about 18 inches, so I'm gonna cut this at 19. Cindy measured to the floor. Along the bottom edge of the cover, we will install a sleeve with shock cord. It is best that the finished cover not actually be touching the ground if possible. That's why she measured from the floor up and did not add any extra for the sleeve allowance. And the width of it will be the width of this piece. This is the top panel, bottom edge, where the front will be sewn to. By 51. Now she'll cut the front panel 19 inches by 51 for our patio chair set. So this is my 19 by 51 piece that goes down the front of the chair and this is the piece that we just put the darts in that goes across the top of the chair. I'm going to stitch these two right sides together along the 51 inch length in about a half inch seam. Cindy will use pins and she will pin those panels together. You could also use seam stick for canvas, part number 129 if you'd like, in lieu of pins. That's a double-sided tape that is left in place as you sew to help hold the panels together. Sometimes our customers get confused about which is the right side and wrong side of the Sherlast fabric. We have a video on our website that helps explain this. Use this link here if you'd like to see that video. To sew this panel together, we'll be creating a semi-flat felled seam. This means the first stitch will be about a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric, and it'll be a straight stitch about five or six millimeters in length. Notice that Cindy pulls the pins as she approaches them. Once this first stitch is done, the panel will be splayed open so the outside surface is up. And now I'm going to open this up and do a semi-flat felled seam in here to make the seam a little stronger. So to do that, I'm going to push both layers of my seam up and top stitch in from the edge. The edge of the presser foot will be my guide for that. And you don't want to catch anything but your two layers of seam underneath there. It doesn't matter whether you sew the two layers on the bottom side on the right side or left side. We position them on the left side so that we could use the right side of the presser foot as a guide along our first stitch. As Cindy sews this top stitch, she pulls the panels apart so that the center seam is pulled nice and flat. The next piece that I add on is going to be the piece that goes down the back over here. So I'm going to measure the width of the top of this piece. And that's 54 and a half. And then I'm going to measure straight down from here to the height that I want at 
Be sure to measure the highest point of the chair. 34. One inch was added for seam allowance. Now she'll cut a panel to that size. Once cut, outside surfaces should face each other. So this is the back panel that I just cut. I'm going to follow the curve and pin it together, edges, right sides together with the edges even and do about a half an inch seam on this also and then turn it and do the semi-flat fell seam on it, and then I'm going to try it on the chair again. The first stitch, about a half inch from the raw edges of the fabric. After that stitch is complete all along the edge, the panels are splayed open with the outside surfaces facing up. Now we'll concentrate on a top stitch to complete the semi-flat failed seam. Now I'm going to do the semi-flat felled seam here on this side also. Make sure everything's pushed over to one side. And that's all I have underneath there. I'm not going to catch any other parts of it. We only want to sew through the half-inch seam on the underside. That's the two layers on the underside. And splay the panels apart as you sew. Right side of the foot is up against the first stitch. When that's done, let's test it on the chair. I'm going to put this back on with the wrong side out so I can make marks on the wrong side. And I want to make sure that I'm, I've got about the same distance off the edge over here as I do over here. So I'm going to line up my seam along the curve of the original cushion underneath and put a couple pins just straight through it into the cushion to hold it in place. I want this to be somewhat flat across the front. I don't need any a lot of fullness in there. I want that to fit pretty well. So what I'm going to do is find the leg underneath here which is way back here, and make a mark approximately an inch out from where that little foot is at the bottom. And then up here, I'm going to make a mark out also about an inch from the corner of my cushion, which is right here. So there's my mark there. And then I'm going to come up here to this corner and make a mark where the, where the cushion starts to go down. At that point, I'm going to make another mark. So I'm going to draw a line from this mark to this mark to this mark to get the shape of this side of the chair. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Once it's marked, we can take it to the table and cut off the excess. Now on this one, I'm not going to mark an inch out because I've already allowed that inch when I was making my marks on the chair. So I'm going to draw a line from my mark at the front of the seat to the mark at the top and then from the front of the seat down to the uh, the foot of the chair or the floor and I'm going to trim that out we'll put it on the chair yet again wrong side is out it looks like we're going to have some extra fullness back here, so I'm going to um, get rid of a little bit of that by angling this piece from this seam down in about an inch on each side. That means it's about an inch away um, from the foot. You may need to check that on your chair and see if it needs to be more than that. Just because this is three sections, I don't want it to be billowy in the back when we put it on. So I'm going to take a little bit off of that first. So here's where I'm going to um, get rid of some of the fullness in the back. I marked an inch in, and I'm going to taper that up to this top seam. Um, I am going to do this to both sides of this. Our chair requires three of those same panels total. We only showed patterning and sewing of one. Um, since this is three pieces, um, while you weren't watching, I made the two others so that we could seam them all together. 
and um, make the complete piece. Uh, after we put these together, we'll put the ends on. And I'm going to pin these together at these two center seams, um, and then I'm going to take it to the machine and sew it. I'm going to start here at the back and match up the back seam, and then just let it fall where it will as it goes down, and pin it at about a half an inch, which is what my seam will be. And then I can pull it to the sides and make sure it's going to fit before I sew it. As she's pinning this fabric together, let's talk about some other choices in fabric you may want to consider. If you use a vinyl product, it's totally waterproof, but a vinyl fabric does not breathe. If a fabric is used as a cover that does not breathe, it's possible that condensation will build up on the inside, thus promoting mold and mildew to grow. So, if you use vinyl, you need to put in some sort of ventilation. If using a breathable fabric, that is typically not required. Now I can see that my seam is going to match up perfectly right here, and that's okay. This does not have to be exact. And I'm also going to go around to the back and put a few pins in the back seam. Okay, I have this all uh, pinned together and I'm just going from one end to the other to make sure it's going to fit. Um, it's, it looks like it's going to be a snug fit, which is okay. Um, but this end, I still have about my inch hanging off like I started with. And the same on this end. So the next step is to take it off and I'm going to sew those two seams together that I just pinned. Those two seams will be another semi flat fell stitch. We will not show this whole process. You'll notice that when we get to the end of our sewing, our two panels are not directly on top of each other. That is not a big deal, so do not be alarmed about it. In a later step, that edge will be trimmed off. Now the next thing is to do a semi-flat filled seam on the seam that I just did, which is going to require putting this whole section underneath the arm of the machine. So on this one, you'll have to be especially careful that you don't catch another piece underneath and just your two layers of seam underneath there. You can scroll up or roll up the fabric to get it under the arm of the sewing machine, but as you can see, this panel is not that big that we can't just push the bulk of the fabric underneath the arm of the sewing machine. So, sewing large assemblies like this is actually fairly easy, even with underarm sewing machine spaces that are rather lacking. Now that those panels are all sewn together, we'll fit it back on the chair. Now the last thing we need to do is put the side panels on this and then put the shot cord in. So I'm going to measure my height at the highest point from the floor, which is going to be, if I add an inch to the 33, it would be 34. And I'm going to measure outside the legs for my width an inch. So that's going to be 29. So my piece for the side panels needs to be 29 by 34. We'll measure and cut that size. So here is my piece that's 29 by 34. And I'm going to start by pinning this back seam together at a half an inch all the way down. And then this is going to be a straight seam right across here for just this four or five inches until I slant down. So the next part I'm going to pin together is this front seam where it matches the front. It will be pinned right on that seam at that corner. So in order to get this angle right here, I'm going to use the blue chalk 
and I'm going to hold my hand behind the fabric with this folded over so that I can use my hand as a base to make a line. All the way down to where it meets the front piece. And that's going to be my stitching line for this part of the seam. So this is going to be kind of a fit as you go thing. I'm going to cut just out from my blue lines and you'll be able to see that it has a definite curve to it. It's not just a straight line like this one is. So I'll put a few more pins in and then I can take it to the machine and sew it. And I'll do the same thing over on the other side. Now before I take this off to sew those two side seams, I'm going to go all the way around and make a mark where I want to cut it um, for my hem so I don't have to put it back on to do that again later. So I'm just going to mark where it hits the floor all the way around. The sleeve that we create for the shock cord will take a few inches away from this. However, we don't really want the cover to be touching the ground anyway, so this is a good thing. And that piece is right at the floor, so I'm not going to make any marks on it, but I'm going to go all the way around and do that. Now I'm ready to take this off and take to the machine and stitch this end and that end. A semi-flat filled seam again will be utilized here for the sides. At any turns or corners, the needle is typically buried in the fabric, presser foot lifted, assembly rolled around, presser foot lowered. She's actually going to go back a little bit because she believes she went too far. So the needle's buried again in the fabric. The assembly is rolled and then she continues to sew. You must always remember to lower the presser foot before you start sewing, otherwise you'll have a jam. Here we're coming to an edge that has a slight curve in it. It's not a 90 degree, but it is a curve. And she did slit the fabric less than a half inch on the side that needs to stretch. So a little slit will allow the fabric to stretch around that curve better. And here we're coming to another almost 90 degree turn. Needle is buried in the fabric, presser foot lifted, assembly rolled around. Press her foot lowered and then continue to sew. When you're done sewing, be sure to push all the corners out. This will aid in creating the top stitch of this semi flat belled seam. Now, before I turn it around and go to the other side, I'm going to do the semi flat felled seam on this one also. Meaning, she's already done one stitch and this is just the top stitch to complete it. We're approaching a transition where it takes a turn. Watch what Cindy does here. Notice she's rolling the balance wheel around by hand. Then she lifts the presser foot turns the assembly around, smooths everything out, making sure that being sure that she's sewing through that seam on the underside of the fabric and then continues to sew. Let's move ahead. Along the bottom edge we want to install a sleeve. First we need to cut off the excess so that it meets the ground, then we'll create the sleeve. I'm going to draw a line along the blue chalk marks that I made along the floor so that I can um, turn my hem up next. And then I'm going to trim it off on that line all the way around. Once it's trimmed to size, then we can concentrate on creating the sleeve. But before we do that, we need an opening in the front to allow us to tension the shock cord. Cindy's going to do that next. 
Now I need to make a little finished spot in the center of the front for the shot cord to come through. So I'm going to find the center of this piece, which is, it's 29, so it's 14 and a half. And then I'm going to measure out three inches on each side of that mark for my little cutout. And I'm going to end up turning this up two and a half inches. So I'm going to mark up two inches and then the other half an inch is going to be taken up with a seam. And I'm going to cut this little rectangle out. And then I'm going to take a scrap piece of fabric and put it underneath. And pin it around the rectangle. And take it over to the machine and I'm going to sew around the rectangle a half an inch all the way around the three sides. Make sure I don't have anything else underneath me. I'm going to cut this little rectangle out of here. And then cut to the corners without cutting the stitching. And turn this piece to the back side. And I'm going to put a few pins in to hold it in place and put a couple rows of stitching around the perimeter of this and then I'll trim out all the excess fabric. This helps to reinforce that opening so that shock cord can come through on the back side of the cover. I'm going to do another row of stitching around that same edge, um, press her foot away just to make it a little bit stronger right there. We'll trim off the extra, being sure not to cut into the actual cover that's on the outside or underside. And I'm just cutting the one layer out that I added in. This reinforced opening will be on the underside of the cover and allows us to tension the shock cord. Now I'm going to put the shock cord in as I pin this down so I don't have to weave it through later and I'm going to turn it up the two and a half inches and turn under about a half an inch and pin it. And then when I stitch, I'm going to stitch right at the top edge of this. As this sleeve is being created, the shock cord is inserted inside of it, so we do not have to pull it through when we're done. And I'm going to secure this to my the edge of my um, piece so that it doesn't pull through as I'm working with it. I'm back around to where I started, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece off long so it doesn't slide back inside. And then I'm ready to stitch all the way around along this edge. As with all of our sewing, do a little bit of reversing at the beginning, 
to lock the stitch in place and then she'll carefully sew all the way around securing the sleeve down to the cover. Now we'll put the cover back on the chair and tension up that shock cord around the perimeter. To tension the cover, she pulls out the extra shock cord until she gets a nice tight fit all the way around. The wrinkles will be gathered along the front, so she'll use a pony clamp and tighten it over the uh, shock cord so she can take a walk around the cover trying to distribute the wrinkles in the sleeve more appropriately all around the cover. Once she's happy, she'll tension up the shock cord into any more that she deems necessary and then tie a knot. The shock cord will have a tendency to pull fabric away from any concave areas like here along the front. We'll use ties in the next chapter to bring it into the legs. Now because we put shock cord in here, it's pulling this curve where the curve um, goes in. It's pulling out like that and um, we're going to take care of that by adding ties at the legs, which will pull that in all the way around and help secure our cover more. So in order to decide how big I want my ties, I'm going to take the tape measure, wrap it around the leg. If I overlap three or four inches of Velcro, a 13 inch tie should be big enough to attach to this and then wrap around this frame. Uh, we don't need to mark where we're going to put the ties because there's a seam at each uh, at each leg. Uh, we're getting ready to cut the straps for this and I decided they need to be 13 inches long and I'm going to cut them three and a half inches wide um, to accommodate the one inch velcro. And then I want my velcro to be six inches long so it goes almost to the center of my strap. And I'm going to take it to the machine and fold it three times, once in and then once on top of that and then stitch down this long edge and apply the Velcro. apply the velcro I'm just going to sew around the perimeter of the velcro on all four sides. And the other piece goes on the opposite side so that when you wrap it they connect. For our cover, we need to make eight ties. We have eight locations or eight legs that we want to install these ties. They will be installed over each seam. When I apply this to the bottom of the um, cover, I don't want to stitch the shock cord. The shock cord is down here. I want to make sure that it stays down there and I don't catch it in my stitching. And I'm going to lay it right on top of the seam so I have all those extra layers there for stability. And I'm going to do one row of double stitching and then I'm going to scoot over just a little bit and do another row so that all the stress isn't on one row of stitching. And I did sew it to the inside of the cover. Our cover for outdoor patio furniture is now complete. Simply pull it over your furniture. The shock board allows for quick installation and removal. The ties that are associated with each one of the legs, eight legs on this chair, will help secure it in high winds. To install the cover of this size, it takes approximately one to two minutes in total. Okay, here's our strap that we just sewed onto the inside of the cover and it's gonna wrap around the leg to give it more stability. And it's a little awkward because you can't really see what you're doing, but you can feel with the Velcro and make it as tight as you need to. And then the cover pulls down over it. 
and we have one of those at each leg. Uh, here's what happened when we put the shot cord in. It just flew out like a wing. So uh, that was one of the reasons that we decided to put the Velcro on the strap. So look what happens when I strap it to the leg. It makes it much more secure and it looks like it's going to stay there now. To tension the bottom edge, we pulled a lot of excess shock cord out. Just cut it to whatever length you desire. <laughs> the cover for this outdoor curved patio set is now complete. Here's the list of materials and tools we use to build our protective outdoor cover for our furniture. You can find other outdoor storage cover fabric brands from Sailrite. If you have a question about what fabric to use, give us a call at Sailrite. This gorgeous patio set is now protected with a cover that you can make yourself. If you'd like to see other videos that are related to making a cover for patio furniture, check these videos out. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.